Hi, this is John Hyatt. I'm the Head of High Risk Obstetrics at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. Today, I'm going to talk about some work we've been doing looking at assessing cervical softness using the elastography tool from Canon Medical. So by way of introduction, the reason that we've been doing this work is because we're interested in trying to reduce rates of preterm birth. And this data just shows you that in Australia and New Zealand, preterm birth is actually one of the main contributors to stillbirth and neonatal death. So this is a very important clinical issue. We know from previous work that assessment of the cervix is valuable uh, in the context of predicting women at risk of preterm birth. So this is an example of work that goes back to the late 1990s from Jay Iams group that looked at cervical length and basically showed that if your cervix is shorter, then you have an increased risk of preterm birth. And in this work, you can see they actually split uh, those cohorts into two and they use women with a cervix less than 25 millimeters and above 25 millimeters and basically showed that if your cervix was less than 25 minutes, uh, millimeters, you had an increased level of risk. So this would be our traditional assessment of the cervix at 18 to 20 weeks. You can see we're using a transvaginal approach. We've made the image of the cervix nice and large on the screen. We're looking at the midline of the cervix and we're able to differentiate the internal and external cervical os, and then we can make an appropriate uh, measurement of that. We know the cervix is dynamic, so we normally make three measurements uh, in order to um, identify the shortest, which we use for the risk assessment. This is just an example of a cervix that's short. You can see that the funneling occurs uh, internally. And as a clinician, that means if you were to compare this, say, to a speculum examination, you can't actually identify these changes using a typical uh, clinical approach because they're happening uh, internally. Um, so what are the implications of our current cervical screening program? Well, um, I've sort of looked at the um, data that we get from the 5,000 women that we screen a year at the moment. So we would typically expect about 400 of those to deliver preterm, and about a third of those deliver because of spontaneous onset preterm labor. Also, I can then also tighten that little um, cohort to women that deliver before 34 weeks, um, and that's about a quarter of that number. So that would be about 35 women a year. Now, our cervical screening program has about a 2% screen positive rate. So that means of 5,000 women, we normally identify about 100 women as being high risk. If you then look at the effectiveness of this screening program in terms of identifying women who deliver before 34 weeks, we probably identify about 40% of those women. So that means you can do the simple maths and show that about 86% of the women that we identify as being high risk actually go on to have a normal pregnancy outcome. The significance of this is that they get a heightened level of surveillance. We typically scan them once or twice, uh, sorry, one or two weekly intervals up to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Um, and uh, also they will be treated with drugs perhaps like progesterone or with cervical cyclage. So we know that for every woman that we identify and treat who has preterm delivery, there's probably another six women who um, we're giving some surveillance and treatment for where it wasn't necessary. So the aim of including an assessment of cervical softness mm -hmm. is to allow us first to improve the detection rate for high-risk cases and second to reduce the screen positive rate. Why look at cervical softness? Well, if we go to data from the end of pregnancy, perhaps look at the Bishop score, which is designed um, to help facilitate induction of labor, you can see that the cervix is in fact assessed in a number of ways. And one of those five characteristics is to look at cervical consistency, where it's defined as either being firm, medium, or soft. So we're trying to use a similar approach here. So to turn to elastography, um, what we're doing here from a technical perspective is using the um, propagation of ultrasound to look at uh, distortion of those waves uh, between different tissues to help tell us um, which parts of tissue are softer and which parts of tissue are harder. And in this context, we're using a uh, technology called shear wave. And the reason that we prefer that is because it's easier to calibrate and therefore it's easier to make comparisons both within patients and between patients. So this is just an example of how shear waves propagate um, through different uh, tissues of different uh, softness.
And this is how um, it looks when we do an ultrasound. Um, you can see that there's two different modes of, of uh, mapping here. Um, and uh, you can also see the regions of interest that we put on the image then to measure um, the shear wave speeds. And um, in this circumstance, you can see that we've used four boxes, two on the anterior lip of the cervix and two on the posterior. Two of them are towards the internal loss and two of them are towards the external loss. And this is just an, another example. This is a, a short cervix and you can see how the shear wave propagation becomes disrupted uh, in this context. So just to give you some other examples, um, this video clip shows shear wave propagation through the cervix. We've used a very large region of interest here across the whole cervix. And what I wanted to show you is it's actually quite difficult to see the posterior lip of the cervix clearly in this context, and um, the image becomes quite distorted. In this next example, I'm just going to show you what happens when you use a smaller region of interest uh, box. So you'll see us establish this on the anterior lip and towards the internal part of the cervix. And we've actually made comparisons of um, six different parts of the cervix. And this is our preferred point uh, for measurement and assessment because it's the point where you can most reliably reproduce uh, your data. So this just demonstrates how the cervix looks in terms of softness. On the x-axis, uh, a softer cervix is towards the left-hand end and a harder cervix is towards the um, right-hand end. This is a measurement of uh, shear wave speed. And on the um, y-axis, you can see three different cohorts um, at 11 to 13, 18 to 20, and 24 to 28 weeks. And you can essentially see that as gestation advances, the cervix gets softer. You can also see that if you make a comparison between the external and internal os, that uh, the external os typically is softer than the internal os. So we've been able to use this data so far to produce a normal range, going from 12 to 28 weeks of gestation. And you can see that we've defined uh, various centiles uh, at various points, both internal and external os, that then allow us to identify a high-risk group. The potential problem with this data is that if you look at this scattergram of the data that we have, you can see that it shows that the cervix gets softer um, across gestation. You can also see that the external os is softer than the internal os, but you can see that the standard deviation of measurement is very large. And the potential problem with this is it will make it very difficult to dis discriminate between normal and abnormal cases. And we're working on that data at the moment. So two other things I just wanted to remind you about doing transvaginal scans. The first is that when you're assessing the cervix, just remember to place the color box over the internal cervical os, and that helps you then establish whether there's any evidence of vasa previa, which impacts about one in a thousand pregnancies. The second thing that I wanted to remind you was that you can also look at the uterine artery Doppler at the same time as you do your cervical assessment. So here we've moved the probe laterally. You can pick up the a uterine artery, and you can measure the pulse wave Doppler um, using this technique. Thank you for your time.